How's it going YouTube? Today I wanted to look at the new collection from Synthesizers.com which is actually developed by the guy who makes the Vault modules. Um, so based on the quality of Vault, you know these are going to sound pretty great, very analog, and I really think they evoke the sound of these classic uh, 500U, I think that's what they are. Um, like Moog clone modules, which uh, Synthesizer.com has been known for for many, many years, perhaps decades. Um, it's been a long time. But anyway, I've got this little patch here, really basic mono synth. Um, I'm just playing it with my keyboard. I really love the way these modules sound just right off the bat. Um, Just a lot of really nice, uh, let's tune that back down. Let's listen to that filter. Pretty good, right? And it goes really crazy with the resonance at really low levels as well. So when you go up even higher, And of course, you can pitch the filter with uh, Volt Per Octave, which uh, I haven't actually tried yet. So let's uh, let's give that a go. Uh, where are we? Where's the Volt Per Octave? There we go. Let's chuck that into the filter and see what we get. Let's put the level all the way up and just. Let's turn the resonance even further up. And the crazy thing with this, well, it's not crazy, you can do this with any synth really, or at least one that have a, has a, a self-oscillating filter, is if we just um, turn the... Oh, well, <laughs> I guess it doesn't work. Uh, it kind of works. You can just play the filter. Although the, the oscillator is still coming through a bit. So I've got these two amplifiers here. One of them's just controlling velocity. So I can get a bit of dynamics. Let's uh, get rid of that and put this to a more reasonable level. Got a bit of um, pulse width modulation going. Got the scope over here so you can see that. Let's uh, kind of the annoying thing, but it's probably maybe it's accurate to the hardware, but you can't like the the pulse width will like zero out, so you don't get any sound, which I like. And it will do it both directions, but you can't seem to modulate it up to that point. Like, doesn't matter how much level I give it and how close I get to the edge of the range. Just never quite does it until it's just nothing. So, which is, you know... Maybe there's a way to do it. I'm just uh, missing something, but I do think that's a little bit disappointing. Not that that's a feature I would use that often. It's just a bit strange. It's not there. But, um, so I built this little patch just to sort of, I guess, demonstrate the quality of the sounds, but I do have more to show. Uh, before I do that though, I just also wanted to shout out this little MIDI interface here, which it's kind of cool that they included it just because I guess it's part of the uh, original, like the actual hardware module collections. But like in VCV, we, we have plenty of MIDI options, um, but it's cool that it's here. And it, and it sort of means you get to keep the same aesthetic across your 
your patch. Although, of course, I've got this scope here, but I think it kind of blends in. Um, we've got a reverb here as well. Which is very kind of like analog, maybe like spring reverb. I don't love it. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of spring reverbs anyway. It really depends on the spring reverb. Um, but if I bring in up here, I've got some, you know, effects uh, patched in. Bring in some other effects. So, I don't know, I just feel like it sounds pretty great. So, without further ado, let's move on to the other things that I've got prepared down here. So, I've got this sort of block of modules here. This is uh, like one patch. And I've got another little drum set down here. And then I've got kind of like a bass note over here. So let's bring them in one at a time so we can explore them. Just solo that. And I have to use uh, my clock up here to run it. And so, because it's all sequenced. So let's do that. Oh, what happened there? Let's try that again. There we go. All right, so <clears throat> I've got three sequences going. And they're all going into this four channel mixer over here. And I think the four channel mix is quite interesting because of the way that it, the signals kind of bleed together. It's maybe not the easiest thing to demonstrate. <laughs> um, I feel like they were doing it more before. I've also got this clipper. Which, yeah, that's why. So, so if it's on a lower setting, in fact, if I just, uh, let's just get rid of that and go straight out of the four channel mixer so I can demonstrate what I mean. Maybe it just, maybe I was mistaken. Maybe it's all about uh, what happens in this clipper. So let's put it back in there. You get a lot of, it's kind of distortion at lower settings. The higher settings are just, I guess it's kind of like a soft clipper. I kind of like it at those low settings. And the interesting thing is, is you can, you can, uh, Take it out of this output and put it into this rectifier down the bottom. Which, uh... I don't know, I guess I'm still discovering this module. <laughs> what its point is, because it doesn't... It doesn't do much for me, I've got to say. Uh, the oscillators and the filters and stuff sound great. I don't know what's going on with this clip, but, like, it's kind of cool. But it's... Maybe I'm just not using it correctly. Anyway, um, let's go back up here so we get a more volume. Let's actually go back out from here. So it's just a basic three sequences on different uh, like wave shapes. Got a, a ramp, a saw wave, and a triangle. And uh, I'm modulating the filter, this first filter with a sample and hold, which is all of these modules, of course, are from synthesizer.com. <clears throat> I've got this quantizer here. I will say that I was getting some weird glitching before where the last channel here wasn't sending out CV, like it was going in, but it wasn't coming out. Maybe just a bit of, uh, you know, glitching. Uh, maybe it needs a patch, not sure. But it's working now, like I somehow made it work, just by fiddling around with it. Um, I don't know what happened. <laughs> but anyway, really basic 
signal, uh, sorry, uh, sequence. I've got this LFO also modulating this second filter and the second oscillator. And the last one is, if I just bring down these levels, last one's just this triangle. Which is really nice, mellow, sort of plonking, almost like uh, bass tom kind of sound. And the middle one sounds like this, which is like a bandpass filter. And then the first one, it's on a high pass filter. And it's being, like I said, sample and hold with a bit of slew limiting on it. Um, but that's, that's it. So let's bring them all back in. And, uh, I've got this little drum set down here. So let's, uh, have a listen to that. So, I'm cheating a bit, I'm using the Debriatus just because I feel like it just sounds so good. And it's also from Vault, so it kind of works in the collection here. I've just got a bit of fold and a bit of saturate. But what I'm doing here, I'm using this gate math module as like a drum sequencer. And I've got a kick drum, which is this top row here. So I've got an oscillator with the pitch being modulated by a envelope generator being attenuated by this amplifier. Um, I'm also modulating the filter with the same envelope. And then with a different envelope, I'm modulating the amplifier so I can get like a longer tail on it. But I think that sounds pretty good, honestly. Like, I mean, this is one of the great things about modular is you can just patch your own drums. It's not, it's not difficult <laughs> if you know what, like, what uh, drum synthesis is, which is just like pitch modulation, maybe a bit of noise, a bit of filter modulation sometimes, and amp amp uh, sorry, amplitude modulation. But anyway, I've got um, I've got these two other sort of uh, I've got this noise source down here. No, wait, it's just these ones. Um, just going out into this four channel mixer. And that's just that kind of like, what would you call that? Hi-hat, I guess. Um, and then I've got a snare, which is a combination of an oscillator and a noise source. More, more uh, modulation of uh, pitch and, and amplitude. And that's it. And I think it sounds pretty cool. And I, I like this gate mo math module. I need to explore it a bit more. It's quite complicated. Well, it's not that complicated. It's just that it's a bit fiddly. There's a lot of options. Um, took me a while to figure it out. Um, but then it's all going into the four channel mixer. Bit of going into this clipper again. Just, I don't know, why not? Give it a bit of grit. And I wasn't satisfied with that grit. So it's going into Debriatus, which I just love this module. It just makes everything sound so crunchy. So the final ingredient to this uh, is this bass note over here, which is actually the same, basically the same voice or the same little synth patch as this one, but I attached a sequencer to it and uh, it's playing some bass notes. So let's just bring that in. sounds. There's not really much to explain. Uh, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. It, like I said, it's very much the same voice as the previous uh, one that I was playing. But 
I might just uh, turn this down real quick. So, I guess I just wanted to kind of go through these because, firstly, they're new. Secondly, they're, uh, it's pretty exciting to have hardware clones in VCV. Of course, we already have a bunch, but it's really nice to see more of them come through. Um, and I think what's nice about these is that they're just very simple, but they sound really good. Um, so, like, as with a lot of analog synths, you know, you don't want them to be overly complex, or a lot of them just aren't overly complex because you're just there for the sound, the warmth of the sound. And I think a lot of that is captured here. Um, it's a pretty beautiful sounding uh, instrument or modules. So, yeah, I just wanted to talk about it. Of course, like, you know, I know other people are going to talk about them as well because they're new. Uh, so why not? <laughs> um, but yeah, these are very basic patches. Nothing overly complex. Hopefully you sort of can get a vibe of how simple they are. I didn't, uh, I opted to go for just white cables, not that it matters, but like I often try to color code the cables so it's like, you know, audio is blue and modulation signals are pink and gate signals and clock signals are yellow and I don't know, I just do that for my myself and just because it's nice to have some sort of order but I just thought these looked better <laughs> when the cables were all white. So, but like, you know, whatever, who cares? I just think it's, it's for aesthetics, you know, for the aesthetics. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna play out on this a bit. Um, let's bring this over here. And uh, I guess I'll see you next time. Um, I'm not sure what I'll do next week. I kind of just figure it out as I go along. If you have any requests or any ideas about modules you'd like me to cover, then please let me know because I'm always excited to discover new modules and just toy around with VCV. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'll catch you next time, bring this volume up and play myself out.